Welcome beautiful people, Acoustics here and today we will talk about The Invincible, a new indie adventure game based on the 1960s novel The Invincible, written by Stanislav Lem and developed by the Star Wars Industries, which was founded by the creators who previously worked on CD Projekt Red and Techland. Let's get to it! First of all, for those of you who haven't heard about this game before, it's an adventure video game played from a first-person perspective. In the game, the player takes control of astrobiologist Yasna, who must explore the planet Regis 3 for her missing crewmates while facing an unknown threat. Yasna has access to several tools such as a scanner and a handheld telescope that can be used to identify objects and aid her survival in the alien landscape. The developer described the game as a branching narrative with an emphasis on player choice. Other characters include Astrogator Novik, who guides Yasna throughout her journey on Regis 3. You basically might think about this game as a firewatch in space. It is a walking simulator, you explore alien planet and solve its mysteries while speaking to your boss through a walkie-talkie. Game's story is based on sci-fi novel by Stanislav Lem, but is not a retelling of its story, but rather an extension and a spin-off. It is directly connected to the book's story though, so even if you've read it before, game story could still be interesting to you. In the vast wilderness of the Invincible, gameplay takes center stage, attempting to balance the delicate act of immersion and interactivity. Positioned as a walking simulator, the game immediately confronts player with the challenge of navigating the forum planet. Unfortunately, the execution falls short, with clunky movement mechanics and equally cumbersome vehicles, hindering the fluidity you would expect in an exploration-based game. One of the game's highlighted features is the array of tools at the player's disposal. However, these tools, while conceptually intriguing, suffer from underutilization. The lack of motivation to engage with those tools diminishes their significance, rendering them one-trick ponies rather than integral components of the gaming experience. This underdevelopment creates a sense of foreignness within the game, a detachment from the tools that should ideally enhance the immersive nature of the journey. Handholding throughout the game limits the player's agency, leaving little room for personal exploration and discovery. The developers seem to have erred on the side of excessive guidance, robbing players of the joy of the unearthing secrets on their own. At least, that's what I've experienced with the whole exploration thing. The Invincible lets you make choices as you play that are supposed to lead to different outcomes. Even though your decisions seem like they matter, the not-so-great gameplay takes away the excitement of wanting to try out different paths. The gap between the decisions you make and the not-so-fun gameplay makes it less likely for players to want to go through the game again just to see what might change. It feels like the game misses a chance to fully use the cool idea of having player choices shape the story. Also, in the game, chatting with your boss Astrogator Novik is a big part of what you do. These conversations give you a peek into what kind of people the characters are, but the way they talk feels a bit like it was written by two different writers. On one side, the dialogue is all serious, full of morals and science stuff and book-like talk, which is good in my opinion. On the other side, it's super casual, simple and sometimes they toss in some not-so-friendly words. This mix kind of messes with the sci-fi vibe and makes the characters seem less real. Sometimes the talks are awesome, getting you all inspired and thinking, but other times they're just plain silly and annoying. It's a bit of a mixed bag, making the whole conversation thing hit or miss. Even though dialogue writing in the game is questionable when it comes to the talking part, the voiceover, it's done really well. I played in English and I really liked Yasna's voice. The main character voice acting is on point. The Astrogator's voice is good too, even though I don't really like his character much for some reason. Despite that, the voices add to the whole experience and keep you engaged in the sci-fi vibe. The sounds in the game are really good too. The people who did the sound design and made the soundtrack did a solid job. It does a great job of setting the mood, making you feel like you're in this retro futuristic space adventure. It brings back memories of all those sci-fi books you might have read by Stanislav Lem, Isaac Asimov, Arthur Clarke and others. Unfortunately, there are also a few technical hiccups with the sound and dialogues. Sometimes dialogues overlap and characters cut each other off, creating a bit of a messy audio experience. It gives off the vibe that maybe the developers were working with a tight schedule or could use some extra hands in their QA department to smooth out these issues. The game's look has pretty distinctive style. The game has a pretty strong art direction overall, I would say. It shines most when you're inside, like in caves, gorges, vehicles and tents. These places feel carefully made and look really good, but when you go outside to the big open areas, especially the deserts, it gets a bit boring. 
I get it, the planet's a huge desert, but they could have added more interesting stuff to look at. The space background though are super impressive. The game is short, about 6 hours, and the choices that developers made in showing deserts and caves, especially at the start of the game, makes them not so interesting to look at. Maybe the game developers thought putting vehicles and big desert locations would make the space feel really vast and deserted, you know, all desolate and empty, but it doesn't really come across well in how it looks, how you play it, or even story-wise. The idea might have been there, but it doesn't click in a way that makes you feel the hugeness and loneliness they might have been going for. Then there's the people in the game and they look kind of strange. It's like they forgot to finish making them and it messes with the whole experience. The characters don't blend in smoothly with the rest of the game making it feel like they don't belong. The issue breaks the immersion, making it harder to get into the story or the vibe they're trying to create. It's a bit odd that the human models, something pretty basic, end up being a noticeable downside. So, like the game's title says, it's all about Stanislav Lem's sci-fi novel The Invincible. It might sound a bit puzzling, but it's not just retelling the book. It's tied to the book's story, but spins a whole new plot. It's like they took the book's vibe and ran with it to create a fresh experience keeping things connected but not copying the whole story word for word. It's clear the game creators are treating Lem's book with a lot of respect. They didn't throw in totally new stuff that doesn't fit with the original, instead they've carefully woven their game into the existing story making it feel like a natural extension. This careful treatment shows they care about the source material and want to stay true to the essence of the novel. I'm not going to tell you about where exactly this new story fits into the Invincible timeline, because it's a cool mystery in the game itself, figuring out how it links up adds a nice layer of intrigue, keeping you hooked as you explore. Now, the story on its own is alright, but it doesn't quite hit the level of the original book. It's like they took the safe route, not going all out in the gritty and chilling aspects that could have made it more intense. The story could have been darker, colder and way more space chilling, mirroring the atmosphere them crafted. The game's plot caters to all players, whether or not they've read the book. If you haven't, it's a grand mystery, maybe a bit unclear at times, but for those who've read the novel, it offers a familiar yet fresh take, throwing in new details and different perspective. The beauty of the game's storyline, akin to a good sci-fi book, lies in the space it grants for disagreement. You can question the author, the characters, their ideas. It's a narrative sandbox where you get to challenge and engage with the sci-fi universe. This, in my view, is what makes a sci-fi story truly great, allowing for diverse interpretations and discussions. This dynamic narrative engagement where different opinions are not only allowed but encouraged, adds depth to the sci-fi journey, emphasizing the subjective nature of the storytelling and allowing players to shape their own relationship with the narrative. In my view, the weaker aspect of the game's narrative lies in its inability to fully evoke the same deep emotions present in the original novel. It doesn't quite capture the strong feelings of hopelessness and loneliness that the original book had. The game's story lacks the sad and lonely vibes that could have made it more emotional, make, making it not as impactful as the book, unfortunately. Now, let's recap. The game's gameplay is a bit dull, it's more like a walking simulator where walking isn't really enjoyable. You get a bunch of tools, but there's nowhere much to use them. On the upside, turning collected photos into comics is a cool idea that makes you feel more connected to the game world. The game holds your hand a lot, and there's not much room for exploring on your own. The visuals are awesome inside places like caves and gorges, but outside, especially in the big open spaces, they're not that great. The visuals give mixed signals not staying consistent, and it doesn't look neither like a top-notch indie game nor a high-end AAA title. The sounds, voiceovers and music in the game are really good. The voices are solid and the soundtrack nails the retro-futuristic sci-fi vibe perfectly. The story takes a lot from the book, which is better in almost every way. The game feels more like an add-on to the book. The game's story isn't as impressive as the book, but it's still a pretty decent piece of sci-fi. If you haven't read the book though, you might enjoy the game more. So. My scores go like this, gameplay 2 out of 5, visuals 3 out of 5, sound 4 out of 5, story 4 out of 5, fun 2 out of 5, with a total score of 6 out of 10. Here's what I think. The game isn't really worth full 30 bucks. It's better to grab it when it's at least half off or when it shows up on a game pass and I'm pretty sure it will eventually. I suggest checking your local library or Amazon for the book instead. I'm sure you will enjoy it much more than the game. If you end up not liking the book, buying the game isn't a great idea either. So my advice is to read the book and if you still want the game, pick it up for 15 bucks or less during the sale or on Game Pass. And don't forget to check out the soundtrack on streaming services like Spotify or 
Apple Music, it's terrific. I will leave the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, stay curious and happy gaming and reading. Click the like button if you like the video, leave a comment in the comment section below. And please consider subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more videos like this one.